Uh, welcome to the audience. So I'm going to discuss some of the challenges and symptoms I see around the globe uh, when teams move to Agile, and more specifically discuss how they can be resolved and mitigated. Uh, you may not have all of these challenges, but you may recognize some of them uh, that uh, you'd really want to kind of see fixed and address. And I would say in the, uh, the big picture, I still want to keep people doing Agile Scrum if that's their choice. So there are a lot of benefits of doing Agile for feedback loops, et cetera, and early testing. I don't want to, we don't want to break that. So we'll discuss how to fit these things in into an Agile space or an Agile world uh, to get the benefit out of them without breaking things uh, that are already there. Uh, so a little bit about the uh, Scrum and Agile, just kind of one slide. Uh, what to use from the manifesto? A lot of people refer to the manifesto as kind of the, the thing you must do, but if you look at it carefully, it has good things in there and it has some risks in there too. And I want to point out maybe uh, the cause or source of some of the problems people are having if they, if they follow the manifesto a specific kind of way. Uh, typical symptoms. And then I'm going to go through these risks to look out for. Uh, they could be problems you're having now, realized risks, or they could be uh, things that you could end up having a problem with uh, later on. And for each one, uh, I'll discuss how they can be resolved. Uh, the, the solutions are not particularly difficult, uh, but they can be very effective and very easy uh, to put in place. So the manifesto. <clears throat> uh, this is a put in quotes. It's really a, just a copy from a wiki page uh, version of it. Um, so the definition of Agile, Agile uh, so software development uh, refers to a group of software uh, development methodologies uh, based on iterative uh, development methodology and uh, really ends up with evolving uh, collaboration, self-organizing teams uh, that are cross-functional. That's the basic definition of an Agile team. And Scrum is the process that became very popular over the years out of that. And uh, there were back in the day, maybe 10, 15 years ago, even longer, uh, other methods like uh, extreme programming, uh, crystal, crystal light. But the one that became popular and the other one somewhat uh, forgotten about is Scrum. So Scrum is a simple predefined set of milestones uh, to do project management. It's a very effective, it gives a lot of feedback, uh, but it is just a skeleton uh, framework to be used. And, and the skeleton nature of it is where there are some things that you can add uh, to mitigate some of those risks. So the manifesto, uh, this is again quoted from the manifesto page, uh, which is listed there on the bottom uh, right. Um, and so I, I like the idea of the manifesto, but if you look at it in the detail or a particular view, it can cause some problems too. So for example, uh, focusing on individuals and interactions over processes and tools, uh, that can be very beneficial. But if you shift too far to the left, uh, that can also end up with a lot of risk. So it's actually not addressing problems per se. It's just shifting the risk from the right uh, blue text processes and tools uh, when they have problems and challenges uh, back to the left, uh, fixing some of the issues, but actually ad adopting uh, the risks uh, when you don't have good processes and tools. Same thing for working to software over documentation. Uh, to argue that we just, just have code and working software and then arguing that uh, no documentation uh, is, is certainly gives you a benefit of having working software maybe earlier. Uh, but to communicate that, to communicate issues to the test group or to the QA group or to offshore suppliers uh, becomes a risk. Uh, so again, the, 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 the shift is going to the left, uh, but that is not risk-free. Uh, same thing with contract negotiation and custom collaboration. Obviously, I don't know anybody uh, would be against custom collaboration, but not everybody on the planet is as quite as honest and overt as maybe you like. Uh, so having contracts can help uh, mitigate some of the problems uh, when people either change their mind or they go bankrupt or they have problems or whatever. Uh, the contract lays out some basic minimums. Again, there are good contracts and there are bad contracts. Um, uh, having just customer collaboration is not just the only solution that uh, could be put in place there. And following a plan uh, versus responding to a change Actually, I'm in my 30th year of doing this, and I have never met a group yet that has a plan 
uh, did not did not respond to change. Um, the plan was really about planning, uh, thinking ahead. Uh, the plan was baselined. It was a draft at the very beginning, and it was updated to respond to change. So just saying we don't want to plan and we want to just change or uh, respond to change, and we'll begin absorbing or uh, assuming uh, more risk. So what do I recommend out of this? Well, actually, uh, something right in the middle. Uh, I see that manifesto as shifting risk, not addressing risk. Uh, you certainly get different problems and risks by going to the far left or to the far right. And certainly the things on the far right, uh, like documentation, uh, have historically been overdone and uh, maybe done poorly, uh, even planning uh, overdone and done poorly. Uh, but when the things on the right are fixed to be the right level for the organization, and the things on the left are adopted uh, to give more flexibility to kind of how we work, the solution ends up being right in the middle. So I treat this uh, picture as a shifting of risk versus a kind of eliminating or addressing risk. So definition of Scrum, uh, very straightforward. Uh, <clears throat> most of you may be familiar with this. Uh, so we have a backlog. We'll discuss backlog issues in a few minutes. We have release planning. Uh, uh, that is not in the current version of the Scrum Guide, but uh, pre-2011, I think it was in part of the Scrum Guide. I'm going to recommend that we keep that in there. I'll discuss a little later on. Uh, sprint planning, so the work is chunked into two, maybe to four-week increments, and we plan out the details of the sprint or that increment. Uh, the words there in gray, analysis, design, code, and test, are really kind of team-defined tasks. There's really no definition exactly how they should go or even be done uh, in the, uh, sp the sprint, with the exception of the, the demo at the end. Then we have the sprint review, which is the demo to get feedback, which is good. And then the retrospective, which is a lessons learned to figure out really what went well and what didn't go so well and when and how to correct that. And then because it's a chunk to amount of work, there's a visibility for the next chunk, you know, actually starting it and what it's going to be. We can revise the scope of the next chunk and then keep on going. So there's a lot of benefits about doing uh, Scrum in that two-week to four-week incremental nature. So I really like Scrum and Agile, and I, I would recommend it, and I'm going to keep on recommending it uh, uh, forward. However, uh, it is just a framework, and there are, it doesn't have everything you need, uh, typically, and there are things that can be easily added uh, to mitigate risk. So the positive are the work is chunked. Uh, any system that chunks work is a, a typically a good system uh, for visibility. Uh, the teams do create momentum. They get into this routine, which is very po uh, very positive, uh, that if it's Monday, it's planning day. If it's Friday, it's kind of demo day. Uh, scope changes can be managed very effectively uh, by adding them to the backlog and not just inserting them to a sprint that is active right now. Uh, the process can be learned in two days or less, and the burn down charts are very, a very easy and quick way to kind of see progress and trends. So I will keep all those things. However, if Scrum or Agile is used as is out of the box, uh, as per a kind of a two day uh, kind of Scrum, a regular Scrum course, uh, or a 60 minute YouTube course, uh, speed can be mistaken for progress. Uh, there are many pieces being done every sprint but the pieces may not work together particularly well. So it's really pushing a problem downstream uh, to then be addressed by maybe what they call a hardening sprint or a test sprint uh, to resolve that. There are ways to mitigate that, but without too much thought, uh, you can have a, a situation where you have many pieces that work alone, but they don't work together particularly well. Uh, the requirements, we'll discuss requirements in more detail coming up, uh, which is where we have a backlog, uh, but they're one-liners, they're user stories. And, a one-liner uh, has a lot of missing information uh, that can be guessed and guessed wrong, so we'll discuss that. Uh, if teams live out of a two-week by two-week incremental phase, they could be discovering as they go. And if they're discovering really everything as they go, uh, there could be no end in sight. And that can ca cause people with money and schedules and expectations to become very nervous. So we'll discuss that one too. Um, I'll discuss design because design is a huge debate in software. It has been a debate uh, for at least my, my existence.